name is David. I'm Coke Play Print Frontier from the Genesis Group. I'm gonna try to make this fast for y'all. <clears throat> so right now, Bitcoin finally turned green on the Gothium channel. So if you look at the past in 2019, when it turns green, Bitcoin got well in 2019 it got sucked into the Gothium and then you had the COVID dump. Well let's let's look at the la let's look at 2016. And this is kind of what our bear market resembles more. Anyway, it went, it turned green, and then it moved down towards the Gothium. But after that, it's all support, had a nice run up. 2012, I know the, the hand is covering it, but it turned green. Bitcoin kind of pulled down towards the Gothium, and it had this nice run up. Okay. So, it turned green. I think Bitcoin, just like in the past, will, you know, at first when it turns green, it'll have a little pullback. So, I think Bitcoin could get down to like around some, somewhere in the 28,000 range. Okay. And then after that, we're into a bull market where it's just going to be kind of slow. Um, <clears throat> but, it, you know, maybe towards the end of 2024, or first half of 2025 20, bull market will be over now that being said I'm going to look at what at the price of cocoin when bitcoin has his, I, I, what I believe will have his last pullback see how cocoin reacts like I said I have buy orders all the way down to tenth of a cent on cocoin see how low it goes and then <clears throat> you know this whole time when bitcoin was at fifteen thousand and you know even when it goes all the way up to like thirty one thousand cocoin was going down that whole time Yeah, you see the difference. Look at look at this. Look at Cocoin. Look at Bitcoin. From fifteen thousand, nice move up. Cocoin, nice move down. However, I think this time when Bitcoin touches back down and nothing crazy happens and the Bitcoin starts moving up over time, I think that's when Cocoin's going to bottom out. So hopefully some of my buy orders under one penny will go in. I don't even, you know, and I, I guess it wouldn't go past a tenth of a cent. And, um, and then I think Cocoin will start moving up after that. Um, and that's it, you know, and there are some price actions. So I think maybe Cocoin will have one move, one more leg move down. I could be wrong. But, you know, once again, who's the only person who said that Cocoin could go down to a penny or less? It was moi, me. So that's why I still think Cocoin could get, make one move down. If not, after this... Yeah, I'm going to wait till I see certain price movements. And once I see certain price actions in KoCoin, then I would just tell you honestly what I think of when I think KoCoin is going to move. Like, you know, it's done. Like, where when I say, okay, I think the bottom is it and it's done. Because Bitcoin, I still think, has one more little move down I think Cocoin still has one more leg down that's my opinion I could be wrong okay and once I see a uh, uh, specific or yeah uh, in general a, a type of price action movement that I'm looking for then whatever I didn't buy in into Cocoin I'm just gonna go in you know um, cancel all those buy orders and just buy up whatever cocoin with it and just hold and that's it
So, yeah. Um, I'm glad, like I told you, I was like mostly into altcoins and Bitcoin. And then I, I hedged with UBXY. I'm glad I did it back when I did it. You know, uh, it paid out for me. This if and I still have a little bit left. I'm still just a little bit out of the market. Um, still got some tether left, and you know, but when Bitcoin has its final move bottom that I expect, I'm just gonna go all in. And then if Bitcoin does get hit when the stock market gets pulled, uh, rather it happens toward the end of this year, beginning of 2024. Whatever, so I have my UVXY to, um, you know, hedge the losses, so, and that's it, so yeah, that's my game plan, um, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you what I'm doing or what I think will happen, I'm giving you all reasons why, so from that chart from Crypto Crew University, I think, yeah, Bitcoin, you know, we'll have a nice little pull back to 28,000, around somewhere in 28,000, I think that's done. Um, and you know the news can be something like the SEC is rejecting something related to Bitcoin and that's it you know um, and then I think Cocoin will have one more leg down or maybe two at I don't know but I, I'm expecting like one more leg but I have price orders already put in if it does go down and then I just gotta see how Cocoin reacts before I react and that's it you know um, yeah that's all I gotta say so there y'all have it that's what I think will happen we'll see alright um, as always you know I'm praying for all of you in Jesus Christ's name um Oh man, I don't know if I have any followers in France or, or you know, uh, all the KOK members in France praying for y'all. Like, France is going wild. Y'all got to check that out. Wow, some parts of France look like, like they're in a war. Third world country, they're, they're just going crazy. And what I want y'all to look at, especially if you're living in the States, if you're living in America, I want you to check out what's going on in France, the riots. I mean, people are going wild. And it has to do with some, unfortunately, some 17-year-old um, teenager got shot and killed by a police officer, I think. And, you know, Macron, um, he's just like, not even handling business, I heard. Like, he was over there giving an award to Elton John or something. I don't know. But here's the thing. If you're living in the States and you see what's going on in France, do not, for, you know, this is my opinion, you shouldn't be surprised if you see, like, rioting like that, or not as bad, but, you know, back when, um, when Trump was president or running for president, but you see something like that in 2024's election, and if it doesn't happen during the election, like, don't be surprised if you see that after the election. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, so. That's why, you know, um, man, that's why I say now is a great time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, Savior, and Messiah to get to know Jesus uh, through a good church or someone who really knows the Bible. But, you know, you want good support, so good church. And um, that's just, you know, once again, I'm not telling you what to do. You, you do what you, whatever you do is on you, all right? And, but yeah, go to a good church, get to know Jesus, surround yourself with the right people. You want to be spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, physically healthy. Remember... The spiritual world controls the physical world. Your body doesn't move on its own. It moves through your will. You, the spirit that's in your body, controls the body. The car just doesn't turn on and off on its own. Okay, the person in the car controls the car. Directs the car. 
Okay, and so the spiritual world is, controls the physical world. And that's why you got to be spiritually healthy because you see a lot of stuff, rather you're in the States or, or whatever country you're in, where, you know, the dark principali principalities are attacking people spiritually. And it's causing people to make bad judgments physically. And so that's why I said, yeah, you got to surround yourself with the right people. Um... You know, and have people pray for you and pray for other people to protect you spiritually, mentally, physically, all of that. And then you got a job, man, work, you know, my, you should work hard. Like, I work hard. I try to keep all my jobs. Uh, in my opinion, the reason why the labor force might look like the way it does now is because... If you're a company, you want to keep your skilled workers. You would rather cut expenses in your company and try to keep your skilled workers as long as you can. Because it's going to be hard to replace them. You know, companies have to invest a lot of money into training their workers. It's like the military. The military will spend over a million dollars in training their highly trained soldiers think about all the training that you know like a navy seal will go through in his military career from the very beginning before he was even a navy seal till you know um he is a navy seal but think about the training the the camp boot camp sending him you know, to different parts of the world or country or putting them in certain situations, real life, you know, close to real life situations and flying him here and there and, you know, feeding him and, and, you know, clothing him and putting a roof over his head. And all of that is an investment. You know, those highly skilled special ops soldiers, the military, you know, it's not just the physical training, but the training on how to use weapons, what to think, what to look for, all of that. Because the wealth transfers, not just physically, but mentally, what they're putting into these soldiers' heads. All that training costs money. And so you're looking at like over a million or millions of dollars that the government has invested into these soldiers. Now, do you think the government, the military, just wants to let these guys go when, you know, the government's low on money? No, these are the highly trained soldiers, the special ops, you know, Navy SEALs. These are the last people you want to let go. You want to hold on to them to the end, like when the government is no longer in existence, you know, you hold them to the end. Well, companies are like that, you know, you have employees where the company invested you know so much time and money into training and growing that employee that and you know there's a bond and relationship as well and so you don't want to fire your highly skilled employee you don't want to fire these people and so that's why probably the job market plus they fudge up how they count unemployment which also helps any administration. It was helping the Trump administration. It's definitely helping the Biden administration as well. And But that's why the unemployment looks the way it looks. Uh, it's because companies want to keep their employees. They don't want to fire them. They'd rather cut other expenses and keep their employees. Especially the, the higher trained employees as much as they can. So... But I think towards the end of this year and then like 2020, early 2024, the, the employment numbers will look bad. You can only hold them for so long when you're going broke, you know, and like the recession, I still think will be called towards the end of this year or at least by halfway through 2024 or something, in my opinion. And so companies will cut losses, you know, um, maybe Mr. Jerome Powell is going to have to start cutting interest rates but you'll see a spike in the stocks in my opinion historically you'll see a spike but then it'll go down it's gonna go down and um that's really what i'm wondering how will bitcoin react to a stock 
bear market, which it never experienced before. So we'll see how that goes. In the chart, Bitcoin should be good now. You know, yeah, if you're worried about a day-to-day movement, you don't know. But if you're talking about, like, you know, quarterly movement and stuff, like, Bitcoin's in the good now. It's good. You know, it's, it's all upside for, for, you know, rest of this year, next year, right? But I don't know. But then Bitcoin never experienced a, a, a bear market in, in the stock market. So see how this plays out. And yeah, like I said, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do. I just tell you what I'm doing, what I think will happen. And I just tell you all this because I wish I had me in the last bear market. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and someone like me that honestly just tells people what they're doing, you know, what what I'm doing. Right? I wish I had someone like me. A lot of these YouTube channels, they they just say stuff, but they don't really tell you what they're doing. But I am. I'm, I'm mostly in, you know, and I'm just UBXY to hedge if it goes down and that's it. I'm just waiting for one last pullback before I pretty much go all in for for the most part. Just got to see how the market reacts, you know, but that's just me. I don't know, you know. I mean, when CoCoin, you could go back all the videos when CoCoin was, when it went under $3.50, I was like, oh, it's all downhill. And, you know... I personally didn't even buy back into any CoCoin until it was in the lower two cents. And it was like small percentage points. You know, I, at least I can say I bought Bitcoin when it was in the pennies. <laughs> it was a penny something, you know. Um, and I'm glad I accumulated little by little. You know, but I still have buy orders under a cent, right? I wish I had someone like that for me back in the previous bear market when I suffered. You know, but and so that's what I'm doing for y'all. But then once again, I don't tell you what to do. You, you just get information from all over the place and you make your own decision. Right. You're an adult. So. All right, everyone. God bless all of you and Coco. on.